Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Every now and then I do a video demonstrating how I would go about processing someone else's image. That's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to process this image of Tierra del Fuego National Park in Argentina, and it was taken from Peter Z, and he's from Toronto, Canada. I'd like to thank Peter for sharing his image with me. It's an awesome scene and it's a nice shot. It was taken with the Fujifilm camera. You could see in the top left hand corner, 1 450th of a second, f5.6, ISO 160, and it was 18.5 millimeters. Now, how would I go about doing this? Well, in the past, whenever there was haze or fog in a shot, I used to work very very diligently to try to remove that fog or haze. And actually over the last couple of years, I've kind of embraced the fog or haze a little bit. And if anything, I try to accentuate the fog or haze. And that's what we're going to be doing with this image. You can see kind of in the mid ground here, there's a little bit of fog. So I don't want to get rid of that. Now I don't necessarily want it in the sky and I don't want it in the foreground, but I do like it like in this middle part of the image. So I want to make sure that I don't like get rid of it at all and definitely don't not to get rid of it right there. So we're going to go to the basic tab and we're just going to start processing the image. I like to start with tone. Um, first of all, assuming white balance is correct and assuming that I have the proper profile I want to use, I'll go with the Adobe color profile and white balance is fine. So I go right to tone. And what I'll do is I'll pull the highlights down till I see some detail in this brightest areas here. And then I'll push the shadows up until I see details in those darkest areas. Now it's kind of hard to see some of the detail because there is that uh, kind of fog in there. So I'm not really worried too much about it. So I've made the image flatter. Now I want to bring some of that contrast back, but I usually don't use the contrast slider. I'll use the whites and black slider. Hold the option key in on my Mac. Alt key on the PC, click on the whites slider, the screen will turn black. I'll move the white slider to the right till I see some colors coming through. Starting to clip, you can see the blue channel significantly and where the white is, I'm clipping all three channels. And you can see I'm clipping a little bit of green and maybe there's some red dots in there too. So what I'll do is I'll just back this off so I'm not clipping any of the channels at all. So I'll just back it off just to the point where all that color is gone and let go. So that's my white point. Now I'll do the same thing for blacks. So hold my option key. And again on my Mac, I'll click on the black slider. I get a white screen this time. Push this to the left and you can see I'm starting to get some colors coming through. I'm clipping the green channel. Where you see black is I'm clipping all three channels. You can see I'm clipping some of the blue. There's a tiny bit of red there too in the upper right hand corner. So I'm clipping a little bit of all three channels. But let's see what that looks like. I don't mind clipping the shadows or blacks. I don't like to clip the highlights at all. And for those of you not familiar, if you're clipping the highlights or clipping the shadows, what that means is you're not going to have any detail there when you clip them. So you're just kind of pushing them into overdrive. So if you're clipping the highlights or clipping the whites, when you print it, there won't be any ink laid down at all. If you're clipping the shadows or clipping the blacks, when you go to print it, it will just be black ink. So I kind of like to have an image that is processed in such a way where I'm not clipping the highlights at all, but I clip the shadows just a little bit. I like kind of getting that tonal range. So I have the absolute black in the image and I'm almost absolute white, but not quite. That's the way I like to do it. And you can see just moving those four sliders, uh, the image is starting to look pretty good. There's before and there's after. Now um, I'll come down and I'll add a little texture. I want to, again, I don't want to eliminate this fog in the midground. I'll add some clarity. That's starting to look nice. Now, dehaze. In the old days, just a few years ago, I probably would have tried to get rid of that haze out there. Um, I'm going to add to it. I'm going to move it to the left a little bit. I'm going to just accentuate the haze or fog that is in the image. I don't necessarily want it. Um, on the sky or on the foreground and just moving this dehaze slider to the left 
added it pretty much everywhere. Uh, so I'll work to get rid of it in the sky in a moment. But right now I kind of like what it is. We'll go right to saturation. I'll kick up saturation just a little bit. All right, so, so far so good. Now let's work on the sky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a mask for that. So we'll open up the masking tools and we're going to select the sky. Now what I want to do is um, I'm going to turn off overlay for a moment. The whitest part of the sky, it just kind of is boring to me. So I just want to add a, just a touch of warmth to it. But if I go right now and I go, let's say, to the temp slider, move it to the right, it's going to affect the entire sky. I just want it to affect that whitest part of the sky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here where it says sky one and click these three dots and I'm going to intersect the sky with a luminance range. So when I do that, I'll get this eyedropper and I'm going to turn off that overlay again and I'm going to click the whitest part right here. So when I do that, you can see now the entire sky isn't selected, just the brighter parts of the sky. And I have a control over here with the luminance range sliders where I could bring it down even further. So I'm taking it away from some of those midtones in the sky. I only want it to affect the brightest parts of the sky. So I could turn off the overlay, turn on the overlay, and you could see that it's affecting the brightest parts of the sky. Now, because I've intersected the sky mask with the luminance mask, only those brighter parts end up being masked. Then I could come in and go to the temp slider, move that to the right, just to warm it up just a little bit. I don't want to go too crazy. I'll take tint to the left a tiny bit in there. So it just kind of just adds a little more visual appeal to me, at least on the image. So good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and I'm going to create a new mask. And I am again going to select the sky. Now with this sky mask, I'm going to just add some clarity and some texture. I, meant, I mentioned I did not want to remove the fog from um, the mid area, but I didn't necessarily want it up in the sky. So adding some clarity, adding some texture, even adding a bit of contrast will take some of that fog away from the sky. So I think that's looking, looking pretty good right there. I could come in and try to bring exposure down just a little bit on the sky. Yep, I think that's looking looking good. So, so far so good. So I'm done masking. I don't want to add any more mask. At this point, I'll give you a before after. There's before and there's after. All right, I'm almost done. I want to work on the area in the foreground, this grass area here. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to go to the HSL tab and I'm going to go to the luminance tab within that tab. And I want to... Um, I want to make the yellows brighter. So I'm going to go to the yellow slider, move that to the right. I want to make the greens a little darker. So I'll go to the green slider, move that to left. And then I want to go to the orange slider too. And I want to make those a little brighter too. That's not affecting a lot, but still want to make those a bit brighter as well. And I think I'm done there. So overall, I kind of like it. Now what I often do at this point, when I pretty much done, I kind of look at exposure a little bit. And I know this is kind of coming in after the fact, but sometimes I find like if I just tweak it down a little bit, it looks a little better or tweak it up a little bit. I'm going to just tweak exposure down just a touch. Something like that. Now I'll give you a before after. There's before and there is after. Now, those of you that watch my videos know that when I'm processing images, I often add a vignette. I like to add a dark vignette often because uh, when you darken the edges, it tends to push everyone's gaze more towards the middle of the image and it makes it a more pleasing experience. I don't think this image needs that. We do have a, a very subtle leading lines here in the foreground, just kind of leading us up towards the middle of the image. Also, we have the hills on the left and right and the lack in the middle, so it's kind of funneling everyone's gaze towards the middle. So I don't think we need to add a vignette here. I think it's done uh, right now. Now you're probably saying, well, you didn't sharpen it. Now I often say sharpening is overrated. <laughs> um, maybe, you know, it was shot at the lowest native ISO of that Fujifilm camera, which was ISO 160. Those of you not familiar with Fujifilm cameras, I don't 
think there's any of their um, cameras that go down to ISO 100. Uh, some of them are ISO 200, that's the lowest ISO they go, and some are ISO 160. And this one's 160. So um, it's as low as it goes, and it really doesn't have any noise in it. I mean, if you feel compelled, you could add a little noise reduction, but there really isn't. So there isn't any. I'm not going to add any. And by default, uh, Lightroom add sharpening at 40 and color noise reduction at 25. Those are default settings. I'll just leave those alone. I'm not going to do anything with those. I think it's done. I think this looks good to me. This is the way I would go about uh, processing this scene. It's probably very different than what Peter did and probably different than what you would do but hopefully um, seeing how I did it just might give you an idea of the way you could do something the way you could use those masks and intersect masks and do things that you could incorporate into your work your workflow thank you everyone who watches my videos I really do appreciate it I'll talk to you guys soon <laughs>